week. Welcome to the Joy Business Report. Coming up this morning, government expected to receive about $6.2 billion from its multilateral partners between 2023 and 2026 as it is at the final stages of restructuring all domestic debts, including cocoa bills and local dollar bonds. Also coming up, treasury bill sale falls short of $3.79 billion to the ambitious target set by government. Meanwhile, interest rates have risen to 28.9%. Also ahead, ahead of the 2023 media budget presentation, the Institute of Fiscal Studies advises government to review taxes on petroleum products. My name is Daryl Kwa. Thanks for being with us this morning. Also later in the bulletin, the Public Interest and Accountability Committee dismisses perception that Western oil producing companies are shunning investments in Ghana because of the energy transition policies by their respective governments. First though, government has indicated it is at the final stage of restructuring all domestic debts. The Finance Ministry recently announced it has successfully completed its domestic debt exchange program. However, it is now left with reaching a deal with the domestic investors on the cocoa bills and the domestic dollar bonds. Finance Minister Ken Oferata has been giving more details about this at a news conference. We are looking at the, um, the legal documentation um, for the cocoa bills and also the domestic um, debt, the U.S. dollar denominated one. So um, my suspicion really is that um, the SEC uh, needs to clear the documentation and then we'll formally launch it uh, maybe within in the next couple of weeks or so. The minister also gave updates on the pension funds and the debt owed independent power producers. We have also rolled out a program to engage independent power producers. Consistent with the MOU signed with organized labor in December 2022 on the exemption of pension funds, they continue to be exempted. Government is currently engaging organized labor and pension fund corporate trustees in line with the MOU to explore mutually beneficial options within debt sustainability limits and to promote macroeconomic stability and economic growth in the spirit of social in a related development, uh, the finance minister has revealed that government is expected to receive about $6.2 billion from multilateral partners between 2023 and 2026. Addressing the media yesterday, he said the government has come up with Ghana's post-COVID-19 program for economic growth, which is backed by the International Monetary Fund and covers all needed reforms to ensure economic growth. He pointed out that government is committed to following through with the reforms and expects a total of $2 billion from multilateral partners by the end of this year. Backed by the renewed drive for reforms, government is working towards securing significant support from our multilateral partners. All together, and including the IMF funds, World Bank and AFDB support, we expect multilateral support of about $2 billion for 2023 and $6.2 billion between 2023 and 2026. That was Finance Minister Ken Oferiata. Treasury bill sale fell short of the $3.79 billion to the ambitious target set by government as interest rates hit 28.9% for the 364-day bill. According to data from the Bank of Ghana, the auction of the short-term securities went down by 771 million cities. There's more in this report. Government has been borrowing heavily on the money market since the beginning of the year because the market has become the only source of financing. However, it is coming with a higher cost. According to the latest auction results, the government secured 3.018 billion cities from the short-term securities, but accepted 3.015 billion cities. The 91-day bill, as usual, received chunk of the bid from the investors, representing about 79 of the total T-bills bids. About 2.398 billion cities were tendered, but the government accepted 2.394 billion cities. For the 182-day bill, a little above 521 million cities were the bids submitted, in which the government accepted all. The same thing happened to the one-year bill, as government accepted all the bids worth 99.79 million cities. Meanwhile, interest rates continue to surge. The three-month bill went up by 0.43% to 21.69%, while the 182-day bill also surged to 24.97% from 23.95% the previous week. 
That was a business desk report. In other news, as government begins to engage civil society organizations and think tanks ahead of the 2023 media budget uh, review, the Institute of Fiscal Studies has advised the finance minister to reconsider the tax components on petroleum prices that contribute to inflation. According to the IFS, taxes on petroleum products put undue hardship on businesses and households. Speaking at a pre-media budget presentation, a senior research fellow at the IFS, Dr. Said Boache, warned that taxes on petroleum products could negatively affect the government's goal of reducing inflation to a sustainable level in the 2023 budget. Therefore, adjusting fuel levels in line with inflation, which is bound to raise fuel prices also in line with inflation, will feed back into inflation, requiring further uh, raise in the fuel le- uh, level, uh, levels, thereby creating a vicious cycle of higher and higher fuel prices. And that's worsening inflation and economic stability. You had a senior research fellow at the IFS, Dr. Said Boache. State Pension Trust Net has indicated that it will institute additional measures to compel employers to pay workers' pension contributions. It follows revelations that a lot more firms are failing to carry out this function, which is required by law to help protect workers due for pension. Uh, Director General of SNED, Dr. John Ofoetin Kwan, says the legal option has not been ruled out as all options are on the table. I is employing workers and it's failing to remit the contributions, which has deducted from the contributor's paycheck. Then, you know, we have compliance officers that visit your, 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 your premises, go through the books, and then check what you've done versus what we have. And uh, if we find out that you haven't lived up to your obligations uh, towards your employees, uh, then we engage you and, you know, make sure that you pay. And You had Dr. John of Oritinkwa, he's Director General of SNED. The Public Interest and Accountability Committee, PIAC, has dismissed the perception that Western or foreign oil producing companies are shunning investments in Ghana because of the energy transition policies by their respective governments. This is coming on the back of reduced oil production uh, since it started in 2013. The government has in recent times struggled to attract investments in the upstream petroleum sector. Speaking to Joy Business, technical manager at PIAC, Michael Ajman, said the government should speak up, speed up good quality data acquisition in order to attract foreign firms that have the capacity to explore oil in Ghana. What we have to do as a country is speed up in a very efficient and sustainable way our data acquisition in order, as in good data acquisition, not just data acquisition, quality data acquisition, in order to attract investors. Look, this oil companies that we are saying they are shying away from petroleum activities because of energy transition. It is not entirely true. What they are doing is diversifying their portfolios because the Western stakeholders especially are on them. Michael Ajiman is technical manager at Apiak. Now, also in the news this morning, uh, Fast Forward Investment Ghana Limited, a retailer in Ghana bringing uh, international brands to the African market, has announced a partnership with Charles Terwitt to introduce a brand to Ghanaian consumers through a franchise deal. Addressing the media at the launch of his new store at the Crown Mall, Chief Executive Officer John Onyo Guzoro said the move is to enable loyal customers access premium men's clothing brand locally. Fast Forward Investment Ghana Limited is the biggest fashion retailer in Ghana and our specialty or model is in bringing international 